Greetings, friendly families. It is so good to be with you today. You know, it's another day in quarantine, right? You know, I know we're tired of it. We're ready for this to come to end. Just trust me, I am too. I'm right there. I'm ready to see you guys. I love you and I miss you. Um, and I just long to be with you someday soon, really soon, I hope. Um, this is another one of those for me to you devotionals, and I'm hoping that these devotionals are bringing a level of encouragement to you uh, and, and some spiritual focus in your lives during these times that we, we are scattered and staying at home, okay? So again, I, my hope and my prayer uh, is that, uh, that these, these devotionals are serving you and are a benefit to you um, during these, these crazy times, okay? Uh, question for you, do you have a bad place? Can you think of a bad place, a place that you just, just don't want to be in, a place that you've maybe experienced before, but you, you dread to ever have to go back? You know, that bad place, what could that be for you? You know, do you have a good place? Is there a place that you could think of as, as your good place, that place that you just you want to go to, you, you would love to frequent that place as often as you could. It was a place, it is a place of encouragement and a place of joy that you, you find in life. And, and maybe that's the place you go to to kind of get away from the stresses and the anxieties of life. You know, what, what is your bad place and what is your good place? Let, let me give you an example uh, or some examples of a bad place and a good place, right? My oldest brother, Frankie, who passed away uh, a few years ago, um, he had a bad place. He had a bad place. There was one place that he loathed more than any other place, okay? And that place was the doctor's office. He hated it. He did not want to go to the doctor's office. Now, I, I want you, uh, for those of you that don't know me, um, my oldest brother was mentally handicapped, and he had the mental capacity of an elementary school kid, okay? Um, he hated, hated the doctor's office, and he hated it for one reason. Can you think, can you think of what that one reason is? It, it's the shot. He hated the idea of having to get a shot. It was not something he enjoyed at all, and he would let you know that he didn't enjoy it. Matter of fact, my mother would often wait and let him know or tell him pretty much the day that they were going because she, we knew that if, if, if he knew that he was going to the doctor's office, it would consume him. The anxiety, the stress would just consume him, and he would, that cloud would just hover over him for days, and, and everybody would experience the wrath of Frankie if, uh, if he had known that he was going to this doctor's office. And so we would just kind of keep it silent. We wouldn't let him know until it was time to go. And then we just let him know and we would deal with it that day. And, and again, it was, it was his bad place. Hated it. Absolutely hated it. Now, he had a good place. His good place, well, his good place was the beach. He loved the beach. And it wasn't the sand and the ocean. He didn't really care about the sand and the ocean. What he loved was Myrtle Beach, and he loved the boardwalk, the pavilion area, and he just, just, that was his heaven on earth, really was, and he looked forward to that all year long. We would go to the beach every year, and he would look forward to that moment all year long and talk about it over and over and over again, and when he went to the beach, what he looked forward to the most, his happy place at the beach, at the pavilion, was right next to the Himalaya. Himalaya was one of these exciting thrill rides that he just absolutely adored. And it, it played loud music. There was a lot of laughter. There was a lot of energy there in the pavilion, especially right there by the Himalaya. And he would take his tape recorder. Every day while we were at the beach, he would take his tape recorder and he would go and he would hang out by the Himalaya and he would record that ride over and over and over again and he would ride it over and over and over again. And it was such a place that people that worked there actually knew him. They knew him by name and they always looked forward to seeing him. And again, that was his happy place. And he looked forward to it all year long. So we have that that bad place. You know, for Frankie, that was the doctor's office and getting a shot. He just could not stand the thought of it. And then he had his, his happy place, his good place that he longed to be and would be there every day if he could. And he looked forward to it every day of the year. 
to that point, do you have those places? Now imagine for a moment, if Frankie was going to the doctor's office and he is irritable, he is stressed, the anxiety is heavy on him, that's a tremendous burden on him, right? And you go into the office, you pull up to the doctor's office and you go in and the stress level is just, just magnified all the more. His blood pressure is going through the roof because he's so stressed out. You know, and you walk into that doctor's office and then you're walking to the back and you're, you're, you know, he sees the doctor and he sees the shot on the table, um, the syringe on the table, and he's starting to get really nervous. And you could see it to the point where he's, he's shaking. He's shaking. You know, imagine that. Then all of a sudden you say to Frankie, you know what? We're not doing this today. We're not doing this today. And you, you just say, come on, Frankie, we're going to leave this place. And, and you take him back to the car and you put him in the car. And he's probably, you know, like, what's going on? You know, but then you say, hey, we're going to do something different today. And we're going to drive and we're going on a small trip. And I'm going to take you to the beach. Man, Frankie would just be ecstatic. He wouldn't know what to do with himself to go from being in that bad place and, and, and being delivered from that moment of, of, of stress and, and hurt and pain, whatever you know, Frankie was feeling in that moment, all the emotions to go from that to all these exciting and happy and just, just all kinds of good feelings and emotions, you know, to be delivered to that good place. Man, that would have made his world. That would have been the best thing ever. Wouldn't it? I mean, if you were in that bad place, then all of a sudden you were delivered and transferred to the good place. Think about that for a moment, you know? That doesn't usually happen that way, does it? Usually we have to go through the bad place and experience it, and then we go to the good place. Usually we have to finish the yard work before we can get to that really good meal in the evening, you know? Maybe it's, you know, I got to spend all week at work, and I'm not enjoying that work environment very much. You know, it's, it's a very stressful work environment. That's kind of my bad place right now. You know, I got to go through all that before I can get to the weekend and go to the lake or go to the beach or do whatever I really enjoy that experience that good place, you know, oftentimes. But very rare do we find ourselves in a bad place and picked up and moved to a good place. But you know what? God provides that for us. God provides that for us. Think about this for a moment. In Colossians, this letter that Paul writes to uh, the Colossian church, he is encouraging this church through some difficult times. This church, uh, you know, is dealing with some, some heresy, some false teaching that's going on. And Paul writes a letter to this church to encourage them, okay? And at the very beginning of this letter, Paul has an amazing prayer. Okay, it, it's, it's, it's an incredible prayer. And I'm going to read this prayer. And we're only going to focus on a small part of this prayer. But I'm going to read the whole prayer to you. Just listen to Paul's prayer and what he's praying for, for the Colossian church, okay, and the Colossian people. All right, here you go. This starts in verse 9 in chapter 1. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Again, a great prayer. You know, here in this prayer, Paul is praying that they will connect with God, that they will know God, that they will understand his will and that they will be strengthened by him. And everything in this prayer is pointing the Colossian people to God because see, Paul knows this. Paul knows that God is the answer, that God is the good place, that being with him and relationship with him is what is best. And Paul is pushing that and he's encouraging that, that, hey, you know what? I want you to know God. I want you to grow in knowledge of God because that is the good place. That is the best place. 
is to be in the presence of God. And he goes on at the very end, and it really, really kind of speaks to what we're talking about today. He says, he delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. He delivers us from that bad place. And in this case, that bad place is bondage to sin. It's bondage to the effects of sin the, the, you know, and all the, the things, the negative things that comes from being wrapped up in a sinful body and in a sinful world and with a sinful mind. You know, we, we are held captive by that sin. And it is Jesus who picks us up and delivers us from that place. He transfers us from that place to the kingdom of his beloved son, the kingdom of light. Man, that is incredible. That is going from that, that doctor's office to the, to the beach and to be there next to the Himalaya. I mean, that is, you know, that is a tremendous deliverance. And God offers that. And really, the truth is we can't even compare it to anything else. That God himself would deliver us in our sinful state from the wrath of sin so that we could have eternal life. And that eternal life is now. We have this life now. We can experience a level of that joy and that peace now. You know, as we go through difficult times, whether it's the, this COVID-19 coronavirus time or some other time, man, we can find comfort and peace to know that God delivers us, that God delivers us and transfers us from a bad place to a good place. And we can carry that with us every single day and allow that to be a catalyst, allow that to be a catalyst that draws us even closer to God, knowing that being close to God being close to him is the best place ever. Think about that, Friendly Avenue. As you go about your day, just reflect on the mercies that God has given you and the redemption he has given you in Jesus Christ and allow that to be your good place. You know what? It's far better than the Himalaya. It's far better than any good place you can ever imagine just to know that you are with God that you are delivered from the bondage of sin and that God has the best plan for you. That is something good to know, to carry with you, to encourage you, to lift your spirits. Trust in him, Friendly Avenue. Allow him to guide you and allow him to be your good place. Thank you and God bless.